So we've got CMOS tools up and running. We're able to log things. Um, next step is to uh, figure out what we're doing with those logs. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll go back to the settings. Um, now, like I said, I have mine going to the downloads folder of my uh, device, and any time that a log gets saved, it goes to. Let's see if I can find it. Files. Downloads. Ah. Nope. Downloads, and these are the logs that have been saved. So, what I typically do, we'll go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my cruise control real quick. Trigger logging. All right, so we've got a log going. We'll uh, do a little bit of gas for just a second, just so we have a little blip on there. And I'm going to hit the cruise control button, and I'm going to turn logging off. A neat feature is you can go to Quick View at the bottom there, and it gives you a little spot. You can kind of drag your thumb around, and you can see the uh, different things that you know are going on. So we were on the default tab. If you go to the braking tab, for instance, that I have, or the cam tab, or chassis tab, whatever, and click view, and it'll show you whatever tab you're currently on when you hit quick view. That's only for your very last log that was taken. You can go into log viewer, and you can go to load CSV, And um, it's looking for the CSV of the actual log, not the not the PID list CSV. So I'll go into my CMS Tools folder, go to Logs. Or actually, I'm sorry, I save them under Downloads. Typically, I transfer them to my Google account. Um, and the last one that we just took was this one right here. So here's this, and then here you can also set which PIDs you're looking at if you want to look at it more in depth. You know, brake pressure, coolant temp, whatever. Hit OK, and it'll add those things onto there. Um, you click this little down thing, it opens up to the full screen. Um, so that's just a real quick look at, you know, as far as viewing the logs goes. Uh, we'll go back to the settings. There was something else I had wanted to go over. Uh, man, what was it? Adapter. Okay. The adapter name. I recommend that you change this to something unique just because if you happen to be in an event or something and there's other people with the same name, there might be a chance that you end up picking up their uh, adapter or vice versa. So I just have mine named, you know, something unique. And then uh, you click set adapter name. Yes. Save. So, yeah. One of the really neat features of CMOS tools is the calculated horsepower and calculated torque PIDs. Um, these are in the default PID lists, and essentially it uses the speed of your wheels and how quickly they're accelerating to gauge, you know, rough horsepower. Uh, it's best to do it on flat ground. It comes in a lot of handy when tuning or if you want to compare, um, in my case, like from one lap to another, with, you know, checking heat soak and all that good stuff. Um, we're going to go back and... In order to have the horsepower stuff reading somewhat reasonable numbers, you want to go to the car tab of the settings menu and the gear ratios. You'll notice that these gear ratios are pretty goofy and I have a final drive of one. Um, because the Mark 7s all use multiple final drive ratios, we don't have a single final drive. That means that they might potentially be different 
in certain gears. The DQ381 in particular is bad because I think it's like gears one and two or one final drive, then gear three switches. It's it's silly because it switches back and forth. And um, I'll be sharing a link in the video description for the folder where you can find, you can basically take the individual gear ratios, so you can take whatever the actual first gear ratio is, multiplied by the first gear final ratio, and that gives you this total ratio right here. Um, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. The curb weight is important to set. Um, that should be, you know, weight of the car with the driver. Tire diameter, you're going to want to calculate based off of the size of your tires. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can plug in your tire size to a tire size calculator, or you can go on TireRack.com, and they have diameters listed of every tire that they sell there. The coefficient of drag by default is based off of a GTI body style, GTI, Golf R, or whatever. Um, same with the frontal area. I have not messed with those at all. Um, numbers that I get tend to be between you know, 320 and 340 horsepower, which is probably reasonably close to right. Um, the main important thing to know is that it's all relative. So you can use the, the built-in horsepower calculator to compare one change to another or one condition to another but it really shouldn't be used as an end-all, be-all, you know, my car makes X amount of horsepower, because that's just not the case. All right, so as I said before, um, when you're trying to set up the calculated horsepower and torque in CMOS tools, you want to make sure that the gear ratios are correct. Um, I built this gear ratio calculator that is very easy to figure out, you know, what your total gear ratio is. Um, you'll notice that some of the transmissions, let's see, it's the, the DQ381s, like I said, are the worst. So first gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear have one final drive ratio, and then two, three, six, and seven have a different one. What that means is if you try and use CMOS tools with just a single final drive ratio, you're going to get really weird horsepower calculations in every single gear. And they should be somewhat close to each other. Um, in the real world, realistically, you're only going to be using gears three and four for true, you know, comparisons. Um, but as you can see here, especially with the DQ381, that's a problem because three and four are different final drives. The easy way to do it is, as I showed you, is take the total ratio for whatever transmission that you have, you know, if you got a DQ250, whatever. Um, you can open up this gear ratio calculator. I'll have the link in the description. Um, you will, because it's on my Google Drive, you will have to make a copy of it. So you can just go to File and Save as Google Sheets or um, Download. You can download it as an Excel file. Um, so just do that, and then you can actually modify it yourself. Uh, this thing also has the ability to figure out the tire diameter. Um, and I have it in, you know, inches. So you will have to convert it from inches to meters because I believe the meters is what CMOS Tools uses. That's not a big deal though. Um, but it's also a gear ratio calculator for comparing tire sizes and stuff. So you, know, you can put a 265, 35, and see how that affects the overall tire diameter height. So use this to get the final gear ratios and then put just one as the final drive ratio on CMOS tools and use these total ratios for the individual gears and then that will get you straight as far as that goes for calculated horsepower. Moving on, if you recall when we exported the Mode 22 CSV from CMOS tools we ended up with a weird file format where it doesn't get recognized as a CSV. Um, here it's actually shown up as a binary file, but usually I'll get like unknown file type or something. And that's specifically a Google Drive thing. It's weird. But if you, the, the weird workaround fix for that is if you just drag the file and, oh, let's just copy that. Ah, wait, here we go. 
All right, we'll uh, grab it from the actual file here. So I've got the Google Drive app. I'll copy it to my desktop. We will name it root22.csv. It's a CSV file now. We can open it up with Excel just to verify everything looks good. And it does. So now we can, I'm going to delete the old copy. Whoops. Delete the old copy. And we'll just drag this thing right back here. And it is now a CSV as Google recognizes it, hopefully. We will give it a second. Yep, and it shows up as a CSV here. So all is good there, and we can now import this back into CMOS tools, but first we're going to customize it a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to open it via here, open this with Excel, and I'm going to just move these just a little bit so I can see what all is going on. We're going to start by looking at some of the uh, different columns. Um, program min and program max, those are the gauge minimum and maximums. Warning min and warning max is when it starts flashing at you and annoying the heck out of you if it's wrong. Um, when we were in CMOS tools, we already corrected things like the ambient temperature. Remember, we set it to 200 degrees, so the warning isn't going to come on unless everybody is burning to death. Um, warning min is at negative 30, so that's already taken care of. The other way to do it, to do it all in one fell swoop, is to look at this CSV and you can come down here and you can change every one of these all in one go. It's a little bit easier unless it's only like one or two PIDs in which case it probably makes more sense to just do it inside the app. Um, the assign to column, this is where all of our variables are that we were talking about earlier. So remember we were using pedal as a trigger and we were using cruise as a trigger um, within the app to actually start and stop logging. Um, some of these variables are used for actual calculations. So RPM, for instance, for engine speed, RPM is the variable. You'll see that in the equation for air mass, it's air, which is the airflow variable, divided by the RPM engine speed variable, and multiplied by a number that factors in a bunch of stuff for doing conversions and whatnot. And it ends up giving you a value for air mass for milligrams per stroke, uh, which is how you tune it based off of the airflow tables. Um, some other stuff you can do. Um, we will actually add something pretty useful right here since it is lacking in this CSV. We will go ahead and insert a line for, and we're going to make knock average a new PID using existing variables. So we'll call it knock AVG. Bleh, AVG. Um, I'm going to just copy this weird squiggly A symbol, the degree sign. We're not going to worry about the uh, formula. We're not going to worry about the address yet, but we do know we want it to read in the same format as far as decimal places go. The 0.1 is going to be used on everything percent 0.1. The 0.2 or the 0.1 or the 0.0F is how many places after the decimal that it will be reading. So ignition average is um, you know, 1.00 degrees. Um, fuel trims are only it's, you know, it's a solid number. It's 1%, 2%. There's no 1.5% as far as reading it goes. Or, you know, I guess you could if you really wanted to. Um, but that's how you can manipulate how many decimal places are being shown. You can change that, you know, the number right beside the F to do that. Um, this is the message length. This is ECU related stuff. Whether it's signed or not means, you know, essentially if it goes positive and negative, um, and it relates to how the uh, voltage of the sensor 
is or the signal from the ECU, whatever the case may be. So we don't really have to worry too much about that. For knock, it is fall, I'm sorry, true. Um, realistically, since we're using calculated PIDs based off of variables, I don't think it's going to make a difference one way or the other. Um, but we will set our gauge minimum and maximum. We'll put minus, or we'll put zero and minus five degrees for the gauge readings. And then as far as the warnings go, let's have it warn us when knock average, that means the average of all four cylinders is anything worse than negative three degrees. And knock never goes positive, so we'll just plug in a thousand, which is just like the other four PIDs. Um, smoothing, we don't need that. Um, and what that value does is it will interpolate um, values if it's a slow PID to update. Um, realistically, it won't be necessary for a lot of these things. Um, enabled, we definitely want that to be true because otherwise it just won't get logged. Um, you will notice in CMOS tools, if you go into the settings of the, say in this example, it would be mode 22 log list, there's a little toggle under each of the PIDs where you can enable or disable. This is That's what this column here deals with. Now for tabs, we want to put the knock average tab on the default and we also want to put it on the ignition as well. Dot ignition. And it, I don't believe that it matters what order you're putting these things in. Um, previously, it looks like this PID list for knock number one, for knock on cylinder number one, it had that on the default, but we want to log the average of all four cylinders. Um, so we now have it being logged knock average on the default PID list. The only thing we have left is to take care of the length, which we will do too. Um, again, it shouldn't matter because this is going off of other pre-existing calculations, not off of a binary, or I'm sorry, a hex message from the ECU. Um, and then some of these other calculated PIDs, you can kind of uh, draw some conclusions off of other things that are, you know, uh, calculated items, for instance. Uh, 0xfff f. Um, these are things that are calculated strictly off of existing variables and also they have a length of one so it's probably a good idea to do that as well. So we'll do 0x1234 ah, f's and because of my OCD we'll make the x lowercase as well. Um, so our custom PID how can we get the average of all of the cylinders pretty easily? We'll put the variable knock A plus knock whoops, B plus knock underscore C plus knock underscore D. All of those in brackets, in parentheses, and then divide it by four, and that will give us our average that will give us our average of all four cylinders knock. And that is something worth adding to your PID list if you don't have it already. Um, so hopefully that helps some. Um, yeah. Save that list. Now at this point we have the list saved. So we can exit out. And we have it saved. I have it saved in my Google Drive where I pull my lists from. So at this point, uh, we are going to get back on the CMOS Tools logger and we will import this newly made, newly modified PID list and verify that everything works. All right, so sorry, I lied. Uh, there was one other quick thing I did want to go over. Um, I touched on it a little bit in the last video but if you want to rearrange the tabs and change or even add new tabs, you can, um, let's say we want to log cruise control on a tab named hot dog. We can do that. Um, if we want to add Lambda is already on fuel, but we can put fuel dot hot dog 
and Lambda set point fuel dot hot dog um, and oil temp miscellaneous dot hot dog. Let's say we want to make sure that oil temp is the very first thing in the list. As I outlined before, we can use the little straight line thingy and we will put position zero because remember zero is actually the first position. Zero through seven is positions one through eight in normal sense. Um, and we'll also add, let's see, we'll also add engine speed to our well, engine speed dot, or sorry, default dot hot dog. And we want to make sure that engine speed shows up in the second position. So we put one again because it starts at zero. So now we're going to save it and we will get right back to uploading this and we're going to test out this new uh, tab, this hot dog tab, just to see if it worked. All right, so we're back in the car. I've already got CMOS tools connected to the vehicle. We're going to upload the log list now. So we'll go to settings and make sure we have 22 selected. We are going to import a mode 22 CSV. And I need to go to my drive. And let me go to my PID list folder and non HSL lists. And it is our mode 22 CSV that we just got done playing around with. Hit that. And now we can hit save. Now we should have. There's our hot dog tab, our oil temp is the first thing, our engine speed is the second thing, and the other three items that we selected are on the list in whatever order they decide to be in. Um, let's take a look at our ignition. We've got our ignition average. And let's see here, for some reason it is showing up as, I'm oh, sorry, not the ignition average. Uh, we want to see the knock average. So yeah, the knock average is there. It is zero, um, exactly like it should be. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you customize a list. Um, sometimes making tiny changes in the, you know, to an individual PID, it's easier to do in the app. But trying to completely revamp an entire list, doing that um, is usually much easier handled inside of the. CSV on a laptop.